Democratic House member Jamal Woman pulling the alarm in the House office building, delaying a vote that could have caused a government shutdown. Robert F. Kennedy planning to run as an independent. The UAW strikes. And last but not least, North Korea and Russia doing all sorts of talks. Seriously, what is happening to America? Considering the talks between North Korea and Russia, North Korea has wanted to complete its nuclear triad. They have missiles and now a submarine. So I have to think that they will be bargaining for bombers capable of delivering nuclear cruise missiles. I could definitely see Russia sending North Korea TU-95 bombers. More on that later though. So first, this commotion over Representative Jamal Bowman pulling the fire alarm in the House office building. Check this out. Democratic Congressman uh, Jamal Bowman is under investigation for pulling a fire alarm in the House uh, Cannon office building. Bowman uh, was identified by security footage, and uh, his office says this was just an accident. Um, you know, I, I don't know who, how you accidentally pull in a, a fire alarm, SC, but, um, I mean, and all kidding aside, they are taking this somewhat seriously. This is no joking matter up on Capitol Hill, as juvenile as it sounds. Yeah, at best, it's childish. At worst, this is obstruction of Congress or obstruction of an official proceeding. Those are real things. And I don't know if he did this intentionally, and we'll have to wait to see, and we certainly shouldn't impugn him before we know more. We know no. he pulled it. He admits that. Um, why is, is the question. If it was intentional, that's real serious and, frankly, reeks of the sort of stunts that, you know, Republicans try to try to pull sometimes. And don't be like Republicans. Don't be don't be like Republicans. I know things are tense and, you know, the stakes are high, but don't be like Republicans. Isn't pulling a fire alarm falsely against the law? They definitely have some explaining to do, to say the least. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was very quick to call it something out of January 6th. He said Bowman should be punished, especially when you think about how other people were treated when they came in and wanted to change the course of what was happening in the building. Lastly, he called it an embarrassment. Honestly, I'm going to have to agree with him on that one. I mean, I can't believe what I'm reading and saying to you guys. It's a circus out there in Washington and, and not the good kind. Word from the Bowman office is that he acknowledges that he pulled the alarm, but suggested it was unintentional as Bowman did not realize he would trigger a building alarm as he was rushing to make an urgent vote. The congressman told reporters later that day that he was just trying to get to a door and thought that the alarm would open the door. So he pulled the fire alarm to open the door by accident. So I, I know. So what was he thinking was going to happen if he pulled the fire alarm? Right. Like you ever pull a fire alarm thinking it's going to open a door. I've never done it in my life. I, I'm just saying like <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. So the fire alarm sounded in the Cannon office building, which is connected to the Capitol via underground tunnels as the Republicans were trying to begin a vote on this 45 day spending measure to keep the government open and prevent this government shutdown. Now, at the time, Democrats appeared to have delayed starting the vote, which they had been given very little notice about. But many complained that the Republicans were just trying to vote before Democrats had time to read the bill. Representative Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader, delivered a 52 minute speech in what was seen as an effort to actually give his fellow members and staff time to figure out whether his party would support this bill. Ultimately, this vote began about two and a half hours after it was scheduled to start and Democrats overwhelmingly voted in favor of the bill. Speaking of, a lot of people are saying to remember this when the vote comes around again. Some even say to vote against every politician who has voted to continue funding this administration. It's just getting harder and harder to believe a word that these government officials say, let alone put out in the media. Right, guys? I mean, that's like why we have each other, right? Our financial freedom fam right here on YouTube, your one and only reliable source for the latest updates, timelines and developments on Capitol Hill and America. Yeah, that one. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't have to worry about missing out on a single video. I appreciate you guys always being there. Big, big thanks for always lighting up the like button, and I totally appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys here on the channel. But uh, moving on. So Representative Lisa McCain, a Michigan Republican and a member of the GOP leadership team, said that she is circulating a resolution to censure Bowman over this incident. She said that she already has co-sponsors. So Bowman just pretty much laughed off the GOP response and said that they're going to do what they're going to do. It is what it is, I guess. Right. And speaking of government officials doing what they're going to do. Right. We have Robert F. Kennedy Jr. reported to be ending his challenge to Joe Biden for the Democratic presidential nomination and running instead as an independent candidate in a move that could upset the 2024 race for the White House. Now, we're all familiar with the name Kennedy, right? 
This particular guy, Robert Kennedy, is son of the former U.S. Attorney General and New York Senator Robert F. Kennedy and a nephew of the former President John F. Kennedy, a.k.a. JFK. And just to kind of point out, former President JFK was assassinated in 1963 and former Senator Robert F. Kennedy was also assassinated in 1968 during his own presidential bid. Now, according to the media, Robert Kennedy Jr. will announce his run in Pennsylvania on the 9th of October as he feels that the Democratic National Committee is challenging the rules to exclude his candidacy so an independent run is the only way to go. Yet another thing to add to your calendars to look out for in October. I told you guys, October is going to be a big month. And as early as now, President Biden aides are reportedly nervous about the possible impact of third party candidates in a very likely presidential election matchup with Trump. Polling shows widespread concerns, including among Democrats, that at 80, Biden's just way too old to attempt to serve an effective second term in the White House. Trump is only three years younger and faces 91 criminal charges, including for election subversion and assorted civil threats. But polls show less concern among his fervent Republican base that he could be unfit to return to office. Then again, opinion polling showed that Republicans like Kennedy way more than Democrats do by a wide margin. So Trump's campaign could potentially be impacted as well. Trump faces four criminal prosecutions, including charges he illegally tried to overturn Biden's 2020 election victory, and his campaign is bleeding cash for legal expenses. Kennedy also posted a video on YouTube asking Americans to join him for a major announcement in Philadelphia on, drumroll please, October 9th, very scary words. He said that how they're going to win against this established Washington interests is not through playing the game by the current rules. Oh no, they're going to make up some new rules. I wonder what he's got up his sleeve. Definitely something to keep an eye on for the next one. Again, that's happening in October. Now, apparently Kennedy complained that the Democratic Party has essentially merged into one unit with the Biden campaign, denying him a fair shot in the nominating contest. I guess we'll have to just tune back in come Kennedy's big announcement. What do you guys think? Now for some news on the United Auto Workers strike, right? So the union is expanding their strikes. Workers walked out of the Ford assembly plant in Chicago that builds the Ford Explorer, or some people call it the Ford Exploder, and the Lincoln Aviator SUVs, as well as the GM plant in Lansing that makes the Chevy Traverse and, of course, the Buick Enclave SUVs. They said Stellantis was spared after last-minute concessions by the Chrysler parent. GM CEO Mary Barra commented that there's no real intent to get to an agreement, while Ford CEO Jim Farley said the union was holding a deal hostage over a dispute over future electric vehicle battery plants. The UAW responded on social media that neither CEO attended bargaining that week, and yet Barra and Farley made a combined $50 million last year. Hmm. What I'm getting from these harshly worded personal statements is it's kind of looking like there's increasing frustration with the pace of the negotiations that are entering their third week. And it doesn't look like they've made a whole lot of progress, honestly. The union has stuck with a demand for 40% pay hikes over a four-year contract, something that was supported by President Biden himself. The companies have offered pay hikes of about 20%, a little short. The union has been deliberate with their approach to the strike, choosing to walk out of just two additional assembly plants rather than the sweeping impact of a walkout at the Detroit 3's most profitable plants that make pickup trucks. They're also trying to conserve a limited strike fund. The strike costs the union a lot of money. It's $500 per worker per week. With the additional 7,000 workers walking out, we're looking at over $12 million a week out of the strike fund. How long can they afford to do this? The total number of picket lines has grown to 25,000, or about 17% of the union's members at the three automakers. Now, if you've noticed, unlike past strikes, UAW leaders opted for targeted strikes at select plants instead of initiating national walkouts. It's called the work stoppages stand-up strikes a nod to historic sit-down strikes by the UAW in the 1930s. The strategy is to keep the automakers on edge and to pit them against one another to achieve better contracts, really cause recurring reputation damage and operational chaos for the companies. Drivers and dealers could soon feel the impact of the UAW strikes. A long and expanding strike will reduce the number of new cars on dealer lots, 
making it harder and harder for people to repair their vehicles and demand for parts needed to make new vehicles. So far, the economic damage has been limited because the UAW has struck only a small number of plants and warehouses. But the pain could easily get worse if work stoppages start to include more locations and last weeks or months at a time. Now, another group of businesses exposed to the strikes are the companies that make parts and components like batteries and mufflers for new vehicles. Nearly 700 auto suppliers could be hurt by the strike according to the estimates. A parts shortage could be a big blow to dealers than not having enough vehicles to sell. If parts are hard to come by for weeks or months at a time, some dealers may suspend repairs and lay off mechanics. Layoffs mean yet another blow to our economy. And with the student payments resuming and that near miss with the government shutdown, I don't know how many more we can actually take before we see a full-blown recession. CIE Nucor, an auto components maker notified workers on September 21st that it expected to lay off 300 employees at four Michigan plants starting, drum roll please, October 2nd. The extent of the layoffs will be determined by the length of the potential UAW Detroit 3 strike. Now this definitely just got real guys. This last one could really be it. North Korea preparing for a new cold war with Washington and stepping up its nuclear weapons program. So just last month, North Korea unveiled what it called a nuclear attack submarine. Not to mention their leader Kim Jong-un recently returned from a visit to Russia and there are fears that Moscow could furnish Pyongyang with new technology in exchange for sorely needed weapons for its war in the Ukraine. According to military experts, a burgeoning military relationship between Russia and North Korea will further undermine the global non-proliferation regime. Seoul's president, Yoon suk Yul previously said Moscow aiding Pyongyang's weapons programs in exchange for arms in the Ukraine could be a direct provocation. And this is why Kim Jong-un is saying that a new Cold War is starting to take shape on the world stage. But what do you guys think? Do you feel the walls closing in on the United States? Definitely more reason to tune in again next time, guys. Y'all be safe out there.